Hello and welcome to Jubilee Church's online service. My name is Alyssa and I'll be your host today. We also have a team of online hosts who are live and participating in the service with you. They are available to pray with you and help you connect to what's happening at Jubilee through the chat. Every Sunday, we want as many people as possible to hear the good news of Jesus. So take this opportunity to use the link in your chat box and invite a friend to experience the service with you. So often we can find ourselves in a place where we are weary and feeling distant from God. But Psalm 145 reminds us that that is not so. It says, the Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. He fulfills the desires of those who fear him. He also hears their cry and saves them. We are going to start this morning by singing songs, calling on God because he hears us and he saves us. Please join us as we worship.
Father's Day. We are so grateful that God has given Jubilee so many amazing biological and spiritual fathers. Today, we honor your example, your leadership, and want you to know that we give thanks to God for you. We also want to take a moment to welcome everyone else, especially if this is your first time with us. We love it when there are new faces and we have a gift we would like to give you for being with us today. To receive this gift, click on the link in your chat box and we will connect with you so you can receive your free gift in the mail. We hope you have been enjoying Jubilee's online services and want people to continue to hear about Jesus wherever they are. Please note that starting next Sunday, our service times for online will be updating to one service. Our online service will go live at 10 a.m. with online host available to connect with you. We have the service on demand starting at 11 a.m. If this isn't your first time, but you're newer and want to get more connected beyond Sunday morning, then Growth Track is the thing you should be a part of. To register for Growth Track, use the link in your chat box to sign up for the upcoming class. Hi everyone, I'm Wes McCutcheon, Youth Director at Jubilee. It was at a youth event that my life of following Jesus began. And now my hope for youth is that they discover the radical love of Jesus, just like I did. Today, I get the privilege of welcoming some brand new students into Jubilee's youth group. I am so thankful that we get to make our youth family a little bit bigger this year. And I just pray your blessing and your love and grace to be on this youth group as these new faces get to come and be a part of it. And I just ask God, would you please um, bless them by allowing them to come to know you like I came to know you. And I'm still continuing to grow to know you, Father. I want them to be disciples of Christ, like I've gotten to follow you. And I just pray for so many blessings to uh, lead these next couple of years as they're in youth ministry, leading to the rest of their life, God, that they, that they would know you, that they would find family, that they would really discover what purpose you've given them. God, so I just ask that they uh, fall in love with you and follow you um, for the rest of their days. Amen. Thank you, Wes. It is so exciting to see all these kids come through and know that they have a place to gather with peers and grow in their relationship with God. We want you to know that your giving to Jubilee is an investment into the next generation. It allows us to create opportunities and events that we can put on for our youth. We are so thankful for your generosity. And if you would like to give to Jubilee, then you can do so by going to our website, jubileestl.org, or you can mail it directly to our address. Today we are continuing in our Psalms of Summer series. We believe this series will give us a biblical foundation of truth to live by. Be encouraged by checking out our new music the worship team is releasing alongside the series on our YouTube channel. So take a moment and invite a friend to come and share in your experience. Now let's turn our attention to the scripture reading for today. Today's scripture reading is from Psalm 78 verses 1 through 8. 
Give ear, O my people, to my teaching. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings from of old, things that we have heard and known that our fathers have told us. We will not hide them from their children, but tell to the coming generation the glorious deeds of the Lord and His might and the wonders that He has done. He established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which He commanded our fathers to teach to their children, that the next generation might know them, the children yet unborn, and arise and tell them to their children, so that they should set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep His commandments." And that they should not be like their fathers, a stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation whose heart was not steadfast, whose spirit was not faithful to God. This is the word of the Lord. Hey everyone, it's great to be with you today. So glad you're participating in our service. If I've never had the chance to meet you, if you haven't been able to get to know me, uh, there's something that my friends and family know about me, and that is I'm a forgetful person. I'm a forgetful person, and that's a blessing and a curse. Uh, you know, when I'm upset, I can uh, quickly forget what I'm upset about, or, or even that I was upset, you know, and that's where it kind of works in my favor. It works against me a lot of times though. You know, I'm someone who forgets where I put my keys. I forget where I put my wallet. Um, plenty of people can testify to that. I, I have a place in my house where my wallet and my keys go. Like it's a specific place. But more often than not, I go to those places when I, I, I need to take those things and they're not there. And I know I had a really good reason. I know I had a really good reason for why they're not there and why I put them where they were. I just don't remember what that reason is and I don't remember where I put them. It's, it's just a problem I've had my whole life. Almost missed my high school graduation because I forgot where the ceremony was being, was being held. Uh, my mom's tried to get me to take supplements. People try to help me. Uh, I just don't, I don't remember to take them. So uh, it's a problem. It's a problem that I have. It's a personal problem. But, but you know, I, I thought about this and, and I think the reality is, is that we all share in this problem, admittedly, some worse than others, but I think we all have this problem where we can uh, forget. Uh, if, we, if we think about it, if, if, we, if we never forgot, if we never needed to be reminded, if we ne never needed to remember, um, then we wouldn't need to uh, hear things like, I love you again and again and again. We wouldn't need to hear things like, I'm with you. Uh, we wouldn't need to be reminded of those things if we didn't forget. You know, it would be enough that our spouse on our wedding day said, declared their love for us. And we just always remember that for the rest of our lives. That's, but that's not true. If we didn't have this problem, we, it would be enough for our parents to tell us that, and show us that they love us and they're with us uh, one time and for that to carry us through. But that's, that's, not, that's not reality. It's not true. We, we forget, we forget. And why is that? Because over time, over time, the reason we need to be reminded of these things is that over time, we tend to forget. We forget that people love us. We forget that people are with us. And we've been spending time in the Psalms this summer. And today we're looking at Psalm 78, 72 verses long. It's an incredible song by Asaph, who was an influential prophetic music director for the Israelites. And he writes this Psalm to God's people to give them an incredibly important charge, a life sustaining charge for them to remember and not forget. We're going to focus on verses one through eight today. And he says in verse seven, why he is giving God's people this charge. He says it right here. He says, verse seven, so that they should set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep his commandments. Asaph is aware. He's aware that forgetting is not a me problem. It's not a we problem. It's an everyone problem problem. We all need to be reminded. We all need to remember. We all need to purpose to not forget. And so Asaph starts in with his charge. And he says in verse one, give ear, O my people, to my teaching. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I'll open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings from of old, things that we have heard and known that our fathers have told us. Asaph says, pay attention. I have something to tell you. It's, it's not new information. This isn't, this isn't a new revelation. This is something that you have heard. It's something that you know. It's something that you have been told by your fathers, but you need to hear it again. 
He's reminding us of something that he doesn't want us to forget. But he doesn't just want us to forget. This is bigger than just you and I. He says this, it's not just about you and I not forgetting. He says in verse four, we will not hide them from their children, but tell to the coming generation the glorious deeds of the Lord and his might and the wonders that he has done. He established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our fathers to teach their children that the next generation might know them, the children yet unborn, and arise and tell them to their children. And here's where we're getting into Asaph's charge to the people of Israel, his charge to you and I, to the church. There are two things that I want you to notice in this charge, the who and the what. First, notice all the generations represented here. Who is this message for? He says, he says, their children. Did you, did you notice that? He doesn't say our children. We need to tell our children. He says, their children. Who's he speaking about? He's speaking about the previous generation. He's saying, their children. We will not hide this message from their children. And then he goes on. Speaking goes from the previous generation to the coming generation. He says, so that they will know to speak this over their future children and they will speak it to their future children. So this is a charge, it's a message. Who is it for? It is for everyone. And it's, this message is that important. This reality, this truth that Asaph is gonna speak to, it's that important. It's so important that Asaph is saying, generation after generation after generation needs to hear this. Now, who's gonna deliver this message? Well, Asaph started the Psalm by saying, oh, people of Israel. He's speaking to who? He's speaking to everyone. He didn't say, hey, oh, wise uh, men and women of, of Israel. He doesn't say, oh, children of Israel. He says, oh, people of Israel. Israel's God's people. They were set apart. So who is he? He's speaking to everyone. He says, who will not hide it? He says, we will not hide we will not hide, but rather we will tell. And let me just take a moment here to pause and just remind you that if you have faith in Jesus, that, it, that the, the, the very moment that you went from not believing in Jesus to believing in Jesus, that very moment you became a qualified messenger of the good news. And I say that because, because we often disqualify ourselves. We often say, okay, it's that, that person over there who, who seems mature and he's, they, you know, they're, they're comfortable with you know, talking in front of people. It's, they'll tell other people about Jesus. No, 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 you know, we, we can, we can We can look at our mistakes. We can look at our brokenness. We can focus on what we are not. And there's a real enemy that we have that is constantly wanting to disqualify us from, and hold us back from speaking about the goodness of of God. And the beautiful news that is written through this and through the, the Bible is that we do not stand on our own qualifications. We don't share this message because we have been qualified by something we have done. No, we are qualified because Jesus has qualified us. That's the truth. And that's what I just, I just want you, I want you to hear this as Asaph lays out this charge. He, he, he's not, he is speaking to me and he is speaking to every single one of you as well. And everyone who's put their faith in Jesus, he's saying you, you have, a, we have a shared responsibility in telling people the good news of Jesus because he has forgiven us. He has qualified us. He has shown us love. And, and what that does is it gives us the freedom to say, you know what? I am a mess, but God is amazing. I, I am broken, but he is perfect. Every single one of us can carry that message out to others. So who is this message for? It's for everyone. Who shares in the responsibility to deliver this message? We all do. Every single one of us who calls on the name of the Lord. Verse four says, we will not hide them from their children, but tell to the coming generation. Who, it's, it's for everyone. It's, it's for the current generation. It's for the next generation. So that's who it's for. What is this message? What is this charge? What is this testimony? What is it that we are to tell everyone? He says it, he says, the glorious deeds of the Lord and his might and the wonders that he has done. And this is what Asaph is concerned that we will forget. 
This is what he is concerned that the people of Israel will forget, that they will forget the glorious deeds of the Lord and his might and the wonders that he has done. And the reason is, is because we have a pattern of forgetting. We have a pattern of drifting away from God. It's, just, it's repeated in our history. And what Asaph does is if you read beyond verse eight, which I, I encourage you to do, it's a, this is an amazing Psalm. Asaph takes the remainder of this song to give an account of Israel's history which is a messy one. It's a broken one. It's one that's littered with Israel's unfaithfulness and disbelief and forgetting of the good works of God. And he writes this because he doesn't want them to forget their history, to remember that all through their mess, how God continued to be faithful, how God repeatedly rescued and delivered and moved in power throughout their history. And he starts by recounting how that God set them free from slavery. They were enslaved to the Egyptians and God, he sent plagues upon uh, the Egyptians and he delivered the Israelites in, out of slavery, out of bondage and into freedom. He reminds them that when they didn't know where to go at night, God led them by a pillar of fire and by day, a cloud of smoke, he led them. And when they had their backs against the wall and the Red Sea was on one end and the Egyptian army was, 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 uh, was surrounding them, was coming upon them and there was no hope, there was no escape, there is nothing. The Israelites would have never been able to overcome the power of the Egyptian army. They would have never been able to get themselves out of that situation. But God, in his power, in his authority, he caused water to stand on end and he parted the Red Sea and he made a way where there was no way. And Asaph is just going through and he's recounting all these things. And he's saying, don't you remember? Don't you remember that when we wandered through the wilderness and we grumbled and we complained, God fed us with bread from the angel, uh, uh, bread of the angels. Don't you remember that when we complained and we didn't believe God, he, he, he gave us water from a rock. He did the impossible over and over and over again. When they were weak in their flesh, God chose to have compassion on them. And even in his righteous anger, it came from a place of love so that the Israelites might be restored. God moved in compassion. He kept his word. He was faithful even when they were faithless. And isn't that our story? Isn't that my story? Isn't that your story? Haven't we seen God do amazing things, change lives, restore hope? Don't we see him in all of creation? Don't we see him in the person of Jesus standing in our place, taking the punishment for our sin? And in the midst of such a great testimony, in, in my weakness, I admit, I have questioned him. I've grumbled. I've complained. In my faithlessness, I have doubted him. In my pride, I have judged him. Has he abandoned me? No. Has he stopped loving me? No. Is he no longer with me? No. See, he, he is always faithful. And this is, that's the story of the Israelites. That's the history. He's always faithful. He's always good. He's always loving. And this is the message. Not, not, not yet to a degree, yes, what we have been through, but really the message is to point and to show people how in our mess and in our brokenness, the goodness of God that there is a creator of heaven and earth, that there isn't anyone on this earth who is a mistake. They're not a coincidence. They're not here as a result of some lottery-like jackpot where the chemicals of the universe happen to come together in just the right way to create life and consciousness and conviction. There is a God in heaven who loves them, who knit them together with a purpose. That's the message. Asaph is reminding us that we're living today with a legacy behind us of testimony after testimony after testimony, both of old and personal that speak to that reality that God is faithful, good, and true. And here's the great thing about God. He is aware of our humanity. He is aware of our weakness. And he isn't a God that says, I love you, I'm with you just once and expects you just to clean it. Even though he could, I mean, God in, in, in his right, in, in everything that he is, you know, he, he, could, 
He could point to Jesus, the person, the God. He could, he could point to Jesus and say, I've shown you my love. Isn't that enough? Hold on to that till the end. But he doesn't do that. He did that and he continues in his graciousness and gentleness and patience with us to show us and remind us of his love. One of the stories that I reflect on that I retell. And that's what Asaph is calling us to do. He's telling us, he's saying, call these stories back to mind. Remember these stories and the things that God has done. And one of the stories that I retell myself, and one of the stories that helps keep my hope alive is one that many of you actually may have heard. It's one that my family has heard. But many years ago, I, I remember, many years ago, I was driving home one night Driving home from the hospital, Daniela was sick, an incredible amount of pain. Um, and I was driving home alone. I just remember it was dark outside. And, and honestly, I don't remember all the details, but I, what I do remember is I remember just being so angry with God. I, I remember, I remember being so angry with him. I remember hitting my fist on the steering wheel and, and telling God how he was being unkind and how he was being unfair and how I didn't understand. Had God shown me faithfulness before that moment? Yes. Had God been good to me before that moment? Yes. Had God been loving to me before that moment? Yes. But you know what? Honestly, in that moment, none of that came to mind. What I was consumed with was my anger towards him and for the situation that I was in. And I will never forget this moment because in the middle of me literally screaming my lungs out in my car, my phone rings. And on the other end is a, a friend, not a friend that we talked a lot on the phone or this wasn't like a normal occurrence. But I, I, st I stopped my screaming, I answered the phone. And there was a friend on the other end who had no idea what was happening in that moment with me, had no idea what was going through. And he just said, I was praying and I felt like God put you on my heart. I felt like I was supposed to pick up the phone and call you and just remind you that God loves you and I just wanna pray for you. Honestly, I don't remember what he prayed. I'm sure it was good. But God, God in his grace, in the midst of my childish, prideful, anger fit, he was patient with me. He had compassion on me. He brought me back to truth. He reminded me that he loved me. He reminded me that, he, that I wasn't alone, that he was with me in, in the midst of all of that difficulty, that he was with my wife, that he was with us. He reminded us. And now when things get hard, now when things get difficult and I feel, I can still feel that question tugging at my heart. Is God good? What's going on here? Is this fair? But when I, when I start to feel that question, I can remember that moment. This doesn't happen every time we go through a difficult situation, but God gave me that moment, that gave me that story to remember and reflect on so that when I can feel tempted to start questioning it again, I can come back to the resting place. No, 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 he is good. He loves me, he is with me, he is walking through this with me. Let me tell you, God has given you a story. God has saved you from things. He has sustained you through things. He has given you a life. You carry with you a story that is a story to be told of how he has not treated you as your sins deserved. Asaph is charging the Israelites in this passage to remember their stories, to not forget the good works of their God. He is charging you and I to retell our stories so we don't forget. So it stokes our hope in God for the present and it burns outward from us, not to remain with us, but it burns outward from us into other people's lives, into the coming generation so that they might know the goodness of their God. So important we tell the next generation because they're going to be told a story. Listen, they're, they're, you're, our kids are going to be told a story and the world's gonna weave an appealing story 
It's gonna look shiny on the surface. It's gonna look like that it's a story uh, and a path that can satisfy, but the world can never deliver on that promise because there's only one who can deliver on that promise. There's only one who can offer us peace, hope, and life that is not momentary, but eternal. We must tell the next generation the stories of God. And I'm just gonna come back to verse seven to remind us of why. Asaph says, so that they should set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep his commandments and that they should not be like their fathers, a stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation whose heart was not steadfast, whose spirit was not faithful to God. So we want everyone to find life. God doesn't desire for anyone to perish. He wants us. He wants them generation after generation to know him, to find their hope in him, to not forget and to remember who he is and who he created them to be. And there is a danger, there is a warning in this passage of not committing to remembering the works of God, of not living in this relationship that God has given us. So we can find ourselves in a place where our hearts have hardened against God. We can become a stubborn and rebellious generation. I, you know, I don't believe anyone sets out to be stubborn and rebellious. I don't think anyone wakes up and decides, you know what I want for my life? I want a life opposed to God, opposed to the spirit of God, and I wanna be found unfaithful. Like no one that I have ever known can think of wakes up and that is their desire. We don't say that, but the pathway to ending up there is through forgetting our hope in God. It's forgetting who God is. It's forgetting that he has saved us and he's brought us into not just a work, but a family, a people. It happens over time. It happens one decision at a time, not, not believing that God has our best in mind, afraid of, of where following him will lead us one step at a time, heading down a path where what we want becomes louder than what he wants. I say, we say this all the time, but we, we drift. We, we don't drift towards God, we drift inwardly. And it's because of the Asaph's awareness of that, the reality of that is saying, he's, that's why he's saying we have to purpose to do this. We have to commit to do this. We have to wake up in the morning and say, oh Lord, thank you. Thank you today that your mercy is new. Thank you that you're good. You know, I don't understand a lot that's happening in my life, but this is what I know. I know you're good. I've seen your goodness. I know you're faithful. I've seen your faithfulness. We don't wanna end up drifting away from God, letting our heart turn harder and harder and harder more distant, forgetting his works and his goodness. It's not what we wanna do. It's not who we went to be. It's not who we were created to be. If you believe that Jesus is the son of God, if you believe that he died for your sins and if you have turned your life over to him to lead you, then you have a hope. You may need to be reminded of that hope today. You may need to put into practice a routine of reminding yourself of the hope that you have, but you do have a hope. You have a story. A story like mine where in a low moment, God met you. You had a moment where, where you were something else. You were something broken. You were something rejected. But then in his grace, he saved you. We, you had a moment where you were, you, you did not know God, but now you know God. You had a moment where you were defined by your performance, but now you are no longer defined by your performance or your past or your present circumstance. But you're made new. You're a family member. You're a son and daughter of God. That's who you are. You were something and now you are something else, a new creation in him. And this charge from Asaph is for every single one of us to hear, for ourselves, to live out ourselves, to share in this responsibility of telling these things. And, and you know, I wanna take a moment. I know it's Father's Day and I wanna take a moment and I wanna specifically encourage you fathers on this day where you're being celebrated, I would just wanna encourage you to purpose with me, purpose with me to be servant leaders in our home who tell of all the wonders of God to our children, to tell them 
of our brokenness and our imperfections and our, and our shortcomings, to tell them of how, how, how God has been good and faithful to us and loving to us in the midst of all that. Fathers, let's lead by example in our homes. Let's tell of the stories of the goodness of God. Let's recount them. Let's not forget. As I wrote this sermon, I told my wife, I need to do better at this. I mean, every time I prepare a sermon, I just, I'm, I'm ultimately, I'm just led to repentance. I'm led to, in, in a holy conviction of what God has called me to do. And I, I'm, I'm very aware that I am not a perfect father. I'm very aware that if my children look to me to fulfill the deepest desires of their heart, they are going to be disappointed and I am going to come up short. And the best thing that I can do for them, the best thing that you can do for your children, fa fathers, is to walk humbly with the Lord and to continually remind and point your children to His goodness and His faithfulness. They have a perfect Father in heaven. You have a perfect Father in heaven. Let me remind you, let me just say that again. You have a perfect father in heaven. In contrast to whatever earthly version of a father that you had, good, bad, or in between, you all, every single one of us have us a heavenly father who perfectly keeps his word, who perfectly loves you, who perfectly is with you, who has never, ever broken a promise and who has given you a story to remember and to share. Will you just join with me as we now worship. I count on one thing, the same God who never fails, will not fail me now. You won't fail me now in the waiting. Same God who's never late is working all things out. You're working all things out. Oh yes, I will lift you high in the lowest valley. Yes, I will bless your name. Oh yes, I will sing for joy when my heart is heavy. Oh.
Well, I just wanna end by encouraging you to do a couple things and then inviting some of you perhaps to do something you've never done before. And the first thing I, I just wanna encourage you, church, is to join with me in purposing to create rhythms and routines where we retell the stories of God with our friends, with our family, with really anyone who listened. Remember, this message is for everyone. This is not just to our, this is to everyone. Purpose with me to create some rhythms, both to remind yourself personally of what God has done for you and create some rhythms to share that with others. And I, and I wanna take this moment to invite you to begin a relationship with Jesus today. It's not about following these rules so that God can be happy for us. It's, it's about entering into a relationship with God who loves us, who knows of our imperfection, who knows of our brokenness, knows of our mess. And he says, I see it and I'm laying down my life for you. I'm taking your punishment. I'm taking your place so that you can come be in a relationship with me. And so I just wanna invite you to do that this morning. I wanna, I wanna pray. You can just agree with me in prayer. And I would encourage you to tell someone, if you pray this with me today, tell someone, use your chat, tell one of the, uh, the hosts on, on the service with you, but tell someone that you've, that you've made this commitment today. Why don't you pray with me? Jesus, thank you. Thank you for standing in our place. Thank you for going to the cross and giving your life. Look, my, my brokenness, my mess, it needed a punishment. It did. And you took that punishment on yourself. And today, Jesus, I want to turn my life over to you. I want to enter into a relationship with you. I want to follow you and say, you are Lord of my life. You are good. You are faithful. And I commit myself to you. And Lord, I just, I pray, I pray for anyone who just made that, who, 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 who said those words, God, hold it, would you, Holy Spirit, come upon them, fill them with your presence, solidify that truth that's in their head and make it real in their heart. We ask you to do that in your power, by your spirit, in Jesus' name, amen, amen. God bless you. Have a good week.